What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, Vanity V. Hope you guys are having a fabulous Monday. So, um, if you have been following all of this Shirley Strawberry debacle with the, the leaked prison bay um, audio and then her making her little salacious comments about Steve and Marjorie Harvey, if you've been following the case like me, then I know you guys were like sitting on the edges of your seats the way I have been to see what they were going to talk about and what they were going to actually address today, being Monday, September 11th, regarding everything that has that has transpired this weekend with the leaking of the audio. So, you know, Steve Harvey Morning Show airs every day, every weekday, I think from six to what, 10 or whatever in the morning. And so as soon as I woke up, I definitely wanted to hear what was going on. So um, I woke up today about 7.30 and I immediately went to the WBLS, the audio. And when I went on there, y'all, this morning, I was like, they was just chit-chatting, right? And it was about 7.30. So I was like, so I listened maybe for about 30 minutes. I'm like, dang, they haven't talked about it. However, you know, the, the, the show starts at six in the morning. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe they already talked about it. Let me just, you know, let it marinate and see what I can come up with with finding the um, the show from this morning. So a couple hours ago, I was able to listen to the show and they addressed everything, y'all. So let's get into that. Um, what they did is they put it in a form of a strawberry letter. Y'all know that Shirley Strawberry is known for her strawberry letters when people write in asking for advice, which is what makes this whole situation humorous. Because again, I said, I talked about this in my video yesterday about her being a dummy, which I still, I'm gonna stand 10 toes down on how I feel about her. However, I've changed a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's just like the audacity of the letter, like giving advice when you really have no business giving advice. But if you really think about it, y'all, a lot of people do that. Some of us are guilty of it. I mean, we all have been in a situation where we're giving um, advice, solicited or unsolicited, when we're really not qualified to do that. And so she, they put the the topic or the conversation, they said, this is our real life strawberry letter. So I'm not going to talk about every single thing and I'm not going to, um, you know, actually give you any of the audio. You can find that on YouTube, but I just want to give you some of my comments on what I thought about the, the audio. So Steve kind of kicked it off and he said, look, you know, I normally don't address stuff. Um, you know, myself and Marjorie, when we hear rumors, we let it fly. But he said, the reason why I really think this needs to be addressed, which I agree with, he said, because this is not a rumor. This basically, in in so many words, he said, this is coming from like in-house. <laughs> like, this is not a rumor. This is not lies, fakes, and fallacies. Like, you actually said these things. We got the audio and we heard it. So that is why it needs to be addressed which I respected. And so then Steve was like, okay, well, you know what? Shirley, I'm gonna give you the, the floor and let you talk about everything, right? So Shirley spilled it. I was actually surprised about how transparent she was. She immediately kicked it off and she kind of apologized to Steve, which let me just say this. I appreciated her apology. Um, is it a situation where you're apologizing just because you got caught? Maybe, you know, that might be the case, but nonetheless, I do appreciate her apology. I always appreciate when people take responsibility for their actions. You know, her apology seemed sincere. It was a good apology. It wasn't like one of them Nene Leaks apologies where I apologize if I made you feel. No, she like sincerely apologized. Some might say it's because she know her ass might be fired soon. Either way, I felt her apology. I do believe she probably is very humiliated. She probably feels foolish as she should because she looks crazy. Um, she did apologize. <laughs> I didn't, you know what's crazy? I, I listened to most of the different audio that leaked from her in Prison Bay, Ernesto. I didn't hear the part where she said Steve was winded when she, he was going up the steps. That's kind of funny. And the funny part about this, and this is why I feel like I want to give her grace, is like, that's something that I would say, like, in a private conversation about my friend. Not necessarily to be shady, but I might be like, dang, I'm gonna make up a name. K 
Keisha, shoo, Keisha was breathing hard as hell going up them steps. You know what I mean? Like, she said that about Steve. And it's funny because, like, the visual, I could see him actually breathing hard going up some steps. Like, I could see it. Most people get windy going up some steps. That's why y'all need to take y'all asses to the gym. But that's another subject. So, you know, she apologized. She talked about, you know, from when she found out that he went to jail. She said he went to jail uh, right after 4th of July last year, 2022. She said that initially she didn't know he went to jail. Then she started getting, you know, calls from prison. Then one of her friends said, hey, that's Ernesto. Then she found out, she said initially he told her that he was going to get out in a couple days. We see that was a lie because he's still in there. Um, I do believe she probably had no idea of all the mess he was into. Um, and so she kind of goes on from there and she, she apologizes and she says, you know, I have no, I'm not going to make any excuses for my behavior. I said what I said. It was wrong and I am sorry. Um, and so what I don't, what I would have liked for her to address, she doesn't owe this to us, but it would have been nice for her to say, she did say she was humiliated and she felt foolish, but I would have liked for her given she's in the, She's in the position that she is in. She's giving advice every day, specifically to young women. I would have liked her to say something along the lines of, ladies, don't make the mistake that I made. You know, trusting someone, believing them till the end, making a fool of yourself. Ladies, let me be your example to do better. You know, I completely missed the mark with this. And ladies, I just don't want you guys to make my the same mistake. And the reason why it would have been nice to hear her say that is because we all know, because she's going to stay on the show. Spoiler alert, like Steve forgave her. You know, they had a, a, a very long conversation. The audio was like 30 to 45 minutes where he he's forgiving her and she's going to keep her job. So, you know, she's going to continue to do her stra strawberry letters. She's going to continue to give advice. So it would seem more genuine or more heartfelt or just more relatable if she had, you know, knowing that she's going to continue to give advice on the air because Strawberry Letter, Letter is a huge part of the show for her to take more accountability and just really recognize like I, I effed up y'all and she didn't do that. And I would have loved if she would have done that. Unless there's audio that I didn't hear, but in the audio that I heard, I did not hear her say that. So if I'm wrong, I stand corrected. Y'all will always let me know in the comments, child, because y'all will let me know if I'm wrong. But I didn't hear audio of her saying that. So um, that would have been nice to get that from her. But again, she did say she feels foolish, but it's, it's I feel like more of her foolishness feels is coming from embarrassment naturally you look crazy you were on audio pretty much begging a man in jail to not leave you <laughs> and then what else was really really cringy about the audio is like she was throwing her daughter under the bus which you never do for a man that you've been with eight years you're throwing your daughter under the bus because your daughter was doing what was right and making statements about a man that ain't worth a dime that was hard to, to listen to too so that kind of tells us what type of person you are so getting back to this the discussion today you know she's talking to steve and tommy and carla's there and you know then steve you know pr he pretty much he talked about how this has affected him he he went into um he went into not in depth, but he talked about the rumors about he, him and Marjorie having uh, relationship issues, how that's affecting her. And I decided I'm not going to speak about that because until we know it's true, I'm not going to perpetuate that. He's saying it's not true. She's saying it's not true. Um, it's bothering Steve. And so I'm not going to take part in that. Um, but he was just saying like the timing of all this is really, really tough. And he was saying that he, you know, we got to do better as black people. He was like, you know, I try to uplift black people and all the blogs are tearing me down talking about my wife. And he, I think he's, he was hurt to see that, um, not that, uh, Shirley necessarily took part in that aspect of it because she, she didn't say anything about their marriage. She just, I mean, she did make a comment that he was scared of her, but again, he kept saying the timing of it because he's been dealing with this for the last two to three weeks 
the blogs coming about him about lies about him and Marjorie and then to pile this on he was saying that was hard for him then he also acknowledged that look you know you were having a private conversation we all and it's true like imagine if some of your private conversations got leaked all of us would be in in you know, big time trouble if our private thoughts and conversations got leaked. And so he did. He said, I recognize that, you know, you didn't want this to get out. You know, this is something you were talking to your husband. You would, and, and, and all, in all honesty, I mean, she didn't say anything absolutely crazy about Steve. Um, she was talking shit, but it wasn't like, and thank God it didn't get to this point. It wasn't like she was talking really negative about his marriage or just saying he was a bad person. Um, she didn't do anything like that. She was talking, she was talking shit though, but it was like, it wasn't anything that's completely unforgivable. Um, I don't know that I would trust her again if I was Steve. However, they're getting money together and she is a huge part of the morning show. So I could see at, on a business level, even now he, they were talking on the show about how they're family and all that, and that might be true. But on a business level, it probably is more advantageous for him to keep Shirley on the show because she is, she has a distinctive voice. Her voice is, is a huge part of the show. She has a big segment of the show. Excuse me, y'all, my eyes itching. But yeah, so I could see as on a business move, why he wouldn't want to just kick her to the curb. It's not like he frauded, she frauded him or stole any of her money or like has major beef with his wife or anything that can't be forgiven. But again, I would never trust her again. I, I mean, you know, it would be like one thing where I got one eye open on you, but we can move forward. You know, I forgive you, but I'm not going to forget it. It would absolutely be that type of situation. So, you know, they kind of cracked little jokes, which was kind of cute. And, you know, look, if Steve's going to forgive her, who are we to hold her to the fire? We don't know that lady. Um, but I, and I don't really, I used to listen really, really tough. Like when I was actually in the office, now I work remote from home, thank God. Um, but I, when I was physically in the office, I would listen a little bit to their morning show. I don't really do that anymore. I'm not commuting to and from work. So I'm not listening as often. The strawberry letters are hilarious. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but her, I wouldn't put much credence and in, into like her advice. You know what I'm saying? I think that that is one of the big takeaways. Like you can't be doing, being this naive and ridiculous in private and then, and we know about it now because it's not even private anymore. We know. And then be trying to tell me what I should do with my relationship. Like, no. So that is one thing. I know, I mean, people are still going to write in. I wouldn't. But, you know, I guess it just, her credibility is shot. You, you, we can forgive her. She's probably a lovely lady, right? I don't mean, I don't know her. I don't have anything negative to say about her. But you're not credible to me. That's my opinion. Um, I really admire Steve Harvey because he really took the high road and just pretty much, you know, chalked it up to like, look, we all make mistakes. I love you. You're my family. And we could get past this. And that is the, you know, that's the gist of all of this. I'm actually a little surprised. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I thought she was going to be unemployed by the, by the end of the week. But after listening to them and their dynamic, you know, they love her. Um, I'm sure she's been suffering. And I don't wish that on anybody. Um, she was swindled. Her husband... Oh, and then she she was calling him a strange husband. And she made a point to say that. And Steve, they all say, I'm, I bet, you know what's funny? Steve probably said, you can't never talk to him again outside of, you know, they don't have kids together. So outside of the court proceedings, she said they, she's filed for divorce. So I'm certain that Steve told her you can never speak to him again, ever. That's probably a stipulation of her keeping her employment. Because not only was she caught talking negatively about him, but then, you know, I'm sure Steve doesn't want anybody, including himself, implicated in any of that man's mess. So I doubt it if we'll be hearing any more Prison Bay audio uh, between Shirley and, and or Ernesto. And that's for the best. She'll never, ever need to speak to that man again. Because he not only is he trash, not only does he have 
despicable charges on him. He also has several side chicks. Um, and he talking to telling them to keep it hot, padded, and all, all kind of crazy stuff that he's telling. He's, telling, he's asking them for pictures. They're visiting him. They're calling him. So he's just, he's just trash. So this is just a lesson that hopefully she can learn from at her big ass age because she is a big age. I thought my age was big, but this lady's at a big, big age. And like I said, it just goes to show that there's no limit to the age of being swindled, y'all. So anyway, in closing, she's keeping her job. She's staying at the morning show. Steve Harvey has forgiven her. And y'all leave Steve Harvey alone about his, his, if him and Marjorie are, I mean, it's none of our business, you know, regardless of if it's, if it's true or not, they're having marital issues. He has asked for y'all to stay out of it and I'm going to oblige. Okay. So anyway, like, subscribe, share, you guys. Please drop down in my comments. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Let me know what you guys think about the situation. Um, to me, it's a done deal. It's really not anything else to talk about. I mean, again, we know what it is. She's staying on the show. Her co-hosts have forgiven her. She's filed for divorce. I can kind of put a pin in it on this one. So um, anyway, you guys, like, subscribe, share, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.